Today we're starting to uh, multiply decimals. Uh, this Today we're just doing uh, decimals times a whole number. Uh, but basically everything's the same no matter how many decimals there are. I'll go through that real quick. But a uh, couple of things. One, you don't have, on multiplication, you really don't have to line up the decimal. We're not going to bring the decimal down. Uh, it doesn't say, stay in the same spot. We're actually looking at the placeholders that the decimal represents. So when you're lining this up, or when you're multiplying, just line up your numbers like you're normally multiplying and ignore the decimal till the end, and we'll go over that. So first one, we have 34.6 times nine. Uh, we just multiply as normal. So nine times six is 54, regroup my five. Nine times four is 36. 36 plus five is 41, regroup my four. Uh, nine times three is 27. 27 plus four is 31. Now you don't have to do it this way, you can do it however you want. How I normally do it is I circle all of the numbers after the decimals. Uh, this one only has one decimal, uh, actually it has two, one here, but there's nothing after it. Uh, so I'm going to circle that, which is one spot. Uh, so then all you do is you go over to the end of your number, you start there, pretend it's a whole number, the decimal's at the end, and you just move it to the left, one spot. So when I move this in over here, it's going to be between the one and the four, and our answer is 311.4. Uh, we have 64.2 times 28. Again, just ignore the decimal right now and just multiply as normal. Eight times two is 16. Eight times four is 32, plus one is 33. Uh, eight times six is 48. 48 plus 3 is 51. I've already used these regroups, so I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to put in my placeholder because I'm moving over to the tens column. So I'm going to start in the tens column. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 6 is 12. We add as normal. Uh, 6 and nothing. 3 and 4. 1 and 8. 5 and 2, 1. Then you go and you count your decimal spots or your places after the decimal. I have one spot here. My auto, This is a whole number. There's nothing after it. So I, again, I have one spot. So I start at the end and I just move my decimal over one spot. This time it's going to be between my 7 and my 6. And to show you really know what you're doing, you can put your comma between your one and your seven. So our answer is 1,797 and six tenths. Uh, for this one, we have 40 times 0.72. Uh, I go ahead and if the whole number is zero, I'm just gonna get rid of it. Um, I don't need to multiply by a zero when it's a whole number. So I'm just gonna leave it as 40 times 0.72. <coughs> multiply as normal, two times zero. 2 times 4. Put in your placeholder because you're shifting over a spot. Uh, 7 times 0. 7 times 4. Add 0, 8, 8, 2. Now we count our decimal spots. The 40 is here. There's nothing after it. Uh, 0.72, we actually have two spots after the decimal. So I go to the end, and I just move it over one, two. So one, two, it's gonna be between the 28 and the, I'm sorry, between the eight and the eight. Uh, at the end here, we have a zero. At this point, now that we've moved the decimal, we can get rid of that zero. We don't need zeros at the end of the number after the decimal. So really our answer is just 28.8. Uh, I know some of you all might, well, do I need to move it over again because I got rid of the zero? No, that zero was your placeholder. Really, your answer is 28 and 80 hundredths. You can simplify 80 hundredths to 8 tenths. So the decimal stays in the same spot then. Last one uh, on these, 57 times 2.3. Uh, 3 times 7 is 21. 5 times 3 is 15 plus 2 is 17. I put in my placeholder, get rid of that regroup, I've already used it. 2 times 7 is 14, uh, 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11. We're just going to add these, 1, 
7 plus 4 is 11. Regroup my 1. 1, 1, 1 is 3 and 1. Uh, check my decimals. I have one spot. I go to the end. I move it to the left, one spot. Our answer is 131.1. .1. Uh, to meet peak energy demand, an electric power cooperative buys back electricity generated locally. They pay seven cents per solar power kilowatt, kilowatt an hour. How much money does a school make when it sells back 956 kilowatts to the cooperative? Uh, okay, so um, we get seven cents for every single one of these. How much money is that? Well, there's a bunch of them that were basically repeated, repeated addition, which is multiplication. So I'm just gonna take my 956 kilowatts times my 0 0.07, which is money. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this whole number for now. Uh, it's not gonna affect my uh, answer. So we just multiply, seven times six is 42. Regroup my four, seven times five is 35, plus four is 39. Uh, nine times seven is 63, 63 plus three is 66. I'm gonna get rid of my regroups, put in my placeholder. Uh, zero times everything is zero, so actually I'm done. Uh, I'm just gonna erase this. I didn't see that it was a zero before I did that. All right, so I'm finished with this problem. Now I have to put in my decimal. I have two decimal spots. So I start at the end and move over two decimal spots. And the since this is money, I need to put my dollar sign on it. So we're gonna get back $66.92. Uh, which of the following equation is not true? Uh, 75 times three. Okay, we have a bunch of these there. It looks like they all have the numbers seven, five, and three in them. Uh, 75 times three is 225. So we just gotta see which one of these decimals is in the wrong spot. Uh, these are whole numbers, there's nothing after it, so this would be at the end. That one looks good. Uh, this one has one decimal spot, so it needed to move over one. That one looks good. Uh, this one has one decimal spot, so it needed to be, it. this one actually should have been 22.5 because we move it over one spot. So this is definitely wrong, but let's just check it. Uh, so this one has two. They did move it over two spots. So C is the answer. Um, if you all were wondering about the problem solver, uh, these are the answers for it. Um, here's the graph. It was 1650. $13 and $17. Uh, there's the math for the $16.50. Here's the math for the $13. Here's the math for the clowns, which is $17. I should get in on that clown job. Uh, this one was kind of a weird question. I didn't really like it, but I just wanted to see what you all came up with. There was a bunch of different possible answers for this. Which job should he get rid of? Uh, maybe you said he should stop cleaning the attic uh, since that earns the least of the three. Okay. Uh, maybe she should stop being a clown because it pays the least. It only gets $4.25 an hour, uh, which is the least amount of them. Or really, my answer is I'm not sure because there's not a common rate for all the jobs. Uh, what I mean by is, okay, I know how much I'm making an hour here. It's $4.25. I know I'm making six fifty dollars per attic. I don't know how many hours that takes. Is that a good deal or a bad deal? I don't know. I don't know how much time I spend. Uh, and then walking the dogs, again, I don't know how much time I spend. I mean, is that like five hours? Is it one hour? I don't know how much it is. So really my answer is really, I'm not for sure. Maybe give up the one she doesn't like the most, but uh, we really need more information to make an educated decision which one to get rid of. Uh, so for the last one, uh, we're going to assume that she does all these job every week for 11 weeks. Uh, so what I did first is I added up the three jobs to see how much she makes in a week. Uh, which is $46.50. Then I took my $46.50 times the 11 weeks. 
Uh, here's the math for that, and I got a total of $511.50.